Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Doc Talk. My name is Dr. Michael Brachio here at Velocity Sports Rehab, and in this video, we're gonna discuss how exercise promotes tissue healing. Exercise is commonly prescribed as a treatment for many different musculoskeletal conditions, treating everything from Achilles tendonitis all the way to low back pain. One of the ways that exercise is used to promote tissue healing is through the use of mechanotherapy. Mechanotherapy is the process of creating a mechanical stimulus that will cause an adaptation in the tissues. Mechanotherapy works in three different stages. The first stage is called mechanocoupling, where there's a mechanical stimulus that's applied to the body which alters the cells in your tissues. This alteration creates a chemical signal in those tissues. The next stage is called cell-to-cell -cell communication. In this stage, the chemical signal that was created in the mechanocoupling stage is spread to neighboring cells. This is important for especially post-surgical cases because it means that even if a tissue isn't directly stimulated by load, it can still receive the chemical signal that was generated during that stage. So if we have a post-surgical case where we can't actually move that tissue, we can move the tissues around it and still decrease muscle atrophy because we're still stimulating cells around it. The final stage is the cell response stage. In this stage, the chemical signal that was created in the mechanocoupling stage and then spread through the cell-to-cell -cell communication stage now trigger the cells to produce more proteins and to create more tissues. The goal is to find the right amount of loading that will create the stimulus. Too much loading can cause tissue damage and slow progression, while not enough loading will not stimulate the cell to produce any more tissues. Let's go through a couple examples of mechanotherapy. One of the most common examples is with bones and osteoporosis. The less weight-bearing activity that you do, the weaker your bones will become. This is because there's not enough load on the bones for them to continue to build new tissue. So the goal would be to increase your loading on the bones so that you'll continue to build new bone. However, you don't want to overload the bones because you might increase your risk of fracture. Another example is with muscles. So when you go to the gym and you pick up weight, your muscles will adapt to that force by building more muscle fibers so that you'll become stronger. Whenever you have a muscle strain, after letting the scar tissue form, if you continue to stimulate the muscle fiber, you'll help align those muscle fibers so that they're in their normal orientation, and you'll also speed up recovery because your muscles will adapt by building some more muscle fibers. A less common example would be with tendons and tendonitis. Typically when we have pain, we shy away from loading the structure because we fear that we're causing more damage to the structure. However, tendons were designed to absorb load. So if we completely unload the tendon, we'll do what's called stress shielding, which is when the tendon will continue to degenerate because we haven't put enough load on the tendon. So the goal with rehabbing a tendon injury is that we want to make sure that we have the right amount of load so that we're not underloading the tendon, but we're also not overloading it either. Finding the right amount of load for the tendon will cause the tendon to adapt, which will create a stronger and healthier tendon going forward. Exercise is one of the most effective treatment strategies for treating musculoskeletal conditions. The goal is to find the right amount of load so that we stimulate tissue healing, but we don't cause more injury. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Doc Talk. I hope that you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.